Hello everyone and welcome to another student request video. And just to make it clear before I start, these videos are made in response to individual students who contact me and ask for a demonstration of a technique. These videos are extra videos. They are not telling each student to do exactly the same as this. This video is a response to an individual student, one person, who has contacted me and has asked for a demonstration of a technique. It's the same as the one I did before with a figure emerging from the water. It was a student who she requested to see the effect of a mermaid coming in and out of water. This week we are looking at a student who asked to see an aurora borealis. That is known as the Northern Lights and it's a phenomena in the sky in the Northern Hemisphere up around the North Pole. So just to clarify it again, if you have something that you want me to demonstrate, email or text me and I will try my best to do a demonstration to show you the technique. This is not telling all of you students to do an Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights as if you were machines. In the second painting, every single one of you has freedom to paint whatever subject that you like, whatever it is, and that is your freedom. And if you are stuck on a technique, then you contact me and I will do these demonstrations. But this class, this particular video is not telling you all to paint of Aurora Borealis. It is for one student who requested that. And it might be of interest to other students who look at this if they're doing something and want to find out about different techniques. But it is not a class just now designed to tell you all to do this. You are not machines. You are human beings, adults. And for the second painting, we want something original from you. So it'll be a hundred different images, a hundred different paintings. Not 100 paintings all the same. Okay, I hope everyone understands this. The second painting, you have freedom to paint whatever subject that you want. Take your time, we've got until the middle of December, so that it's not a rush job. And when you do each bit, send me a photograph and I will let you know how it's getting along. I hope this is clear for everybody. I thought it was before when I said this in the earlier video, but there's no harm in repeating it. These particular things I'm doing today are responses to requests from student, students for a technique demonstration. They are not classes that everyone should be doing exactly the same. It, it is interesting to learn a technique but I'm not asking you all to paint, in this case, the Northern Lights. This is for the student who asked for that. So, I hope that is clarified once and for all. Now, I have already painted in the background because I wanted it to dry. So, this student, he wants to see a Northern Lights. So, they always take place in night time. You won't see it during the day. And it's always up in the Northern Hemisphere. So I've done the sky here, going from dark blue until it gets to a lighter blue. And then I just put in some fir trees here with just black paint. Because it's at night, you can't see the green or anything. So I just put those in there. And a little bit of snow down at the bottom here, because it's going to be up in the North Pole. So that's the Northern Lights. And there they are. There's the fir trees just as that shape. Now, I'm a little bit nervous because I have never tried to paint the Northern Lights in my life. So this might be a disaster. 
You'll have to get a photograph of them. I downloaded this just now from the internet. And I'm looking at it and it's kind of greenish, yellowish, purplish. So let's see what on earth I can do with this. So I put out some colours here. I've also got some purplish mix here in this one. And I've put out greens and yellows on this palette because that's all I'm going to need for this. So I'm going to set the photograph at the side of this painting and I'm going to take a big brush. As I'm doing a painting much bigger than the ones you're doing, I'm going to use a bigger brush. I've got two containers of water because I'm going to need plenty of water. Now I'm really kind of apprehensive because I have never done anything like this in my life. I've never painted the Northern Lights, so I'm just going to make this up as I'm going along. So I'm making a kind of bright green here in the middle with yellow. And I'm going to take this brush and then I'm just going to try and put it in here. Oh, that's, you see, I'm going to need more. Because it's being painted on a dark sky. Paint the sky first, then paint the Aurora Borealis. So here it is. Now you're going to need plenty of water because this is going to be a watery effect. So have the painting lying on a table. And up like that. It's in the sky so it's kind of like a, tr a rainbow, it's transparent. Whoa, you can see that's running down onto the trees, so I'll need... <laughs> there we go. That's it. Get up there. So I'm taking water away from that brush and then going back in with another one. And it's getting a bit lighter at the top, so I'm mixing a little bit of white in with it there. Can you see that? It kind of comes out, you know, it fades into the sky. So I'm going to just make that microscopically fade into the sky. And it's going over the trees. So I'm going to have to paint in those trees again later. I'll show you that as this comes along. So I've got that now. It's got a little bit of purple in it there. So I'm going to have to use a slightly smaller brush. And as you know from the colour quiz, purple is made with red and blue. Now you can see this is pretty kind of uh, wild stuff. You're going to have to really kind of pray that this works. <laughs> You know, and what I'm going to do is let this dry and then show it to you later on once it dries. But right now, this is how it's coming. So it's lots of water, lots of greens coming in there. The Northern Lights. The Aurora Borealis. It's a nice name. So I've got drips that have gone here on the trees, so I'm just going to blend that in like that. The great thing about acrylic, it's easy to paint over things that, you know, when you drip things by accident, because you are going to drip. Now this is dripping down quite a bit, so I'm going to have to make sure it's absolutely horizontal. So I'm mixing those colours together. They're all watery together up here and you're going to have to work on that yourself if you're doing an Aurora Borealis like this guy wants. Painting some of the trees. Now this is going down a bit so I'm wanting to get that back up. Okay. Okay. 
Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to lift this, but what I'm trying to get with the water is the merging of the colors. You know, with plenty of water, it's going to work. If you, if you try to paint it just slogging along, it's not going to work. You have to let the water do a lot of the work for you, and that's going to be the tricky bit. Acrylic paint is somewhat in between oil paint and acrylic and uh, watercolor. So you've got all those things going on that you can use to your advantage, like this bit here where the colors are merging together. That's what happens in an aurora, boli aurora, aurora, aurora borealis. Things kind of merge together by accident. And that's what a good painting should also do. So I'm just getting the lighter bits coming. There's kind of trails coming out there. It kind of trails through the sky like ether or like smoke. There we go. So this is not bad, you know. I mean, I, I've never done this in my life. <laughs> and some of you will be saying, oh, I can see that. But, uh, you know, you never know what you're going to do until you try it. Next time I do an Aurora Borealis, I'm going to be more confident. <laughs> Because this is the first time in all my life I've done one. Even though coming up from Scotland, you do see the Aurora Borealis because it's kind of far north up there. So I'm going to stop it there. You know, it's it needs to dry out a bit just now before I put any more things on it. But hopefully, you know, you can see the start of the effect of the Aurora Borealis there coming in the sky. Wait a minute. Let me put some of these lights off because there's lights reflecting on it. Is that better? How's that? I mean this painting has been done in 10 minutes so you've got until at least the 15th of December. So here's this one done in 10 minutes. I've never done this before in my life so I'm like you, complete beginner on this subject. But I've done a really quick effect of the sky. It's not perfect. When it dries, I'll probably neaten it up a bit. But I'm getting the effect of the Aurora Borealis. Put off all these lights. There's still reflections. The effect of the Aurora Borealis. <laughs> the effect of it coming in the night sky. So I started with a dark sky at the beginning. Then I painted the black fir trees at the front here and a little bit of snow along this horizon. Then I took lots of watery paint and I used greens, yellows and a little bit of purple and I used lots of waters to get the feeling of it kind of spreading through the sky. It's not as good as the photograph but in some ways, there's some better stuff happening. You know, I like, you know, it's, it's a painting. It's going to be more electric than a photograph. So I'll probably go into that again once that dries. It has, it's got a lot of water on just now, so I'll leave it for a little while. And you can try this technique if you're wanting to do an Aurora Borealis. I expect every student to do a different painting, though. <laughs> I don't want 100 Aurora Borealises coming at me like a kind of nightmare. Okay, so that's it. That's it. The, the light is reflecting on it. So, you know, you, there, maybe that's it. Can you see that? There are the aurora. There's the lights coming through the sky and this little white coming into it and uh, the dark fir trees at night. So, you know, once this dries and once I flatten it out and uh, once it's framed, it's a nice abstract of an aurora borealis. And it's been done in 10 minutes. So, that's another student getting a demonstration from a guy who's never done this before. I just made it up as I was going along. So, any of you who have a technique or something that you're stuck on, contact me and I'll make an individual video like this. But I'll put it up for everyone to see because later on you might be still doing painting. And you might want to do an Aurora Borealis one day. I'm not asking you all to do this same painting. I want to clarify that. These are techniques for individual students who've asked me to learn something unique that they're doing. 
So whatever you have that's unique, contact me. But don't all paint the same thing, please. Please understand the nature of these videos. They're requests. When a student asks me, what, how can I do this? You know, something difficult. I'll try my best to do a demonstration and I'll put it up for everyone to see so they can learn some, something. But you do your own painting. Make it something unique for you, something individual for you. And if you get stuck, contact me and I'll put up a request video like I'm doing today. This is for an individual student, not for the whole class to do the same. I'm repeating and repeating and repeating this because I've got a lot of students who don't quite get what the nature of this is. So that's why I'm doing this. So I know most of you have got it, but if you get something you're stuck on, contact me and I'll make a little video for that student, but I'll put it up so everyone can see it because there's always something interesting to learn from different people's needs. Okay, that's it for now. Bye.